This is an indoor cycling challenge. Why? Because it's snowing outside. I'm starting this with six weeks left in the year. I've noticed that COVID has added a few extra pounds. So for some people, it's like the COVID-10. For me, it was more about like the COVID-20. I'm 41. I've added an extra layer on my midsection and I can't really get rid of it. When you start an indoor cycling challenge, you have a lot of questions. What do you wear? What do you eat? What do you drink? What kind of stretches should you do? Am I cycling correctly? How many calories will I burn? How much do you sweat? Is the bike set up properly? Was this challenge hard? The goal of this challenge is to just basically feel better. It's not really a weight loss challenge, although I will be checking in to stay relevant. Another goal within the challenge is to do this entire 30 days of cycling in the smallest room in my house to show you that you can literally do this anywhere. The rules of this challenge are simple. I'm cutting out the gym so then that way I can see the effects that cycling has on my body cycling 30 days in a row. I already eat rather healthy. I'm not going to cut out being social. I do eat healthy when I'm going out, but I'm not going to cut out a burger or a steak. I'm not going to count things because literally who has time for that? I wanted to keep this challenge as simple as possible. That's why I'm using a bike and a wheel on train because who has a spin bike just lying around? And to make this challenge exciting, because who really wants to see a guy ride a bike for 30 days, or for you to believe that I'm actually cycling for 30 days, I will be documenting every single day on Zwift and Strava, just so then that way you at home can follow along. My ultimate goal is to cycle 1,100 kilometers, which is the distance from Paris, France to Barcelona, Spain. Now that might not sound very far on a bike, but when you're on with 50 kilometers on a stationary bike is very different than 50 kilometers on Zwift. Twists, turns, and hills. So for the next 30 days, I will be putting a lot of time and energy on the bike. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Day one was a lot harder than I expected, which presented another problem. What did I get myself into? How am I gonna complete this? So I dove into the previous videos on this channel. The way training works pretty simple. Uh, you stress your system or you apply like a certain amount of load and then you recover and you adapt and get stronger. Day three, four, and five were a little bit easier. 60 minute rides and I started to feel a lot stronger in the saddle. Day five, I started to taper. Taper is basically where we bring volume down and, and rest your legs a little. Day six and seven were consecutive 90 minute rides. The first week was really tough. So I turned to the rest of the videos on this channel to motivate me to push through, which also brings me to comfort. Sitting on a bike for a long time is kind of painful. Most important thing you're gonna want for cycling is padded shorts. So a padded short is gonna have a chamois in it. The chamois is kind of the most important part of your entire wardrobe. I'm feeling excited about what lies ahead, so let's jump into week two. Because this was the smallest room in my house, a lot of people asked, how do I go to the bathroom? The hardest part about this challenge is the monotony. Literally staring at yourself day in and day out throughout a virtual world isn't a lot of fun. So thinking back, I had a system when I was training to cycle 24 hours in a row. That system included all the different streaming services, listening to audiobooks on Amazon Audible, and a few different online courses to help push my career forward. Fast forward through weeks two and three, where I progressively added a little bit more and then a little bit more, tapering back and adding a little bit more. The one thing I've realized about these challenges is to listen to my body. Don't push it too much. Which brings me to day 18. And there you have it, 100K on an indoor trainer, done. At the end of three weeks, I haven't really lost any more weight, but I'm feeling a lot stronger and I'm spending a lot more time on that bike. Now, I always believe in challenges to finish strong. This brings me to day 25. And there 
you have it, 160 point nine kilometers or 100 miles or a century ride indoors. Why? Because it's snowing and hasn't stopped all day. Now throughout any challenge, there's going to be a downfall. You're going to have ups and downs every single day. Try being on a bike every single day while I've got a job, responsibilities, and so much else getting in the way. I jump back on the bike no matter what, and I'm there, I'm present. Now I don't know if this is old age, things started to hurt, but I knew that I just had to push through. Everybody has a mental block, I definitely had a mental block, and I just knew that I had to push through. This challenge has been very painful so as I recap throughout this whole challenge, it's day 29. Although I didn't lose a lot of weight, I feel a lot stronger. I look a lot stronger, both physically and mentally. And my productivity has gone through the roof. When I first started on this challenge, I had a hard time staying in the saddle. Completed 1,123 kilometers and over 6,000 meters of elevation, which is the equivalent of hiking Mount Kilimanjaro. My overall watt average initially started out at about 130 to 140 by the end of the 30 days I was at 160 to 170 and not feeling the pain that I once had in the beginning so overall I don't have any regrets I feel a lot better and that brings me to my next challenge what happens if I add a nutrition plan to the next 30 days the beauty of indoor cycling is you only stop when you decide to stop. Today is day 30 and the power just went out. 